All right. Well, hello, Dr. Walker. Um, welcome to this little video. I'm uh, Dr. Richard Van Ink, Director of Infection Prevention and Epidemiology, and we welcome you to this little video conference. Um, Dr. Walker is um, uh, one of our local obstetricians and gynecologists and the representative of Bronson's uh, Clinical Consultant Group. And so we thought it would be good to have a, a, a discussion of an issue that is very popular on social media and, uh, and in other places, and that is what's the effect of COVID vaccine on pregnancy and breastfeeding and on fertility? And we actually know quite a bit about those two things. So welcome, and uh, in general, can you give sort of an outline about what you and your colleagues in the Bronson system and your national professional organization, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, are saying about the COVID vaccine? And uh, is, is it a good idea or not? Sure, I'd be happy to. Hello, everybody. Um, as Dr. Venning said, I'm Amanda Walker. Um, I'm an OBGYN in Kalamazoo in South Haven. And I'm also the clinical director for the system for women's health. So happy to be part of this conversation. And I hope maybe it gives people some answers to I know a lot of questions that have been circulating lately. Um, so your first question, Dr. Van Inc, uh, the COVID-19 vaccine and pregnancy. So yes, as a Bronson provider and as an obstetrician and gynecologist, absolutely recommend the vaccine. Um, in fact, in December, ACOG, as you said, the American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology came out with a statement and they said not only is the vaccine safe, but that they recommend it. And so we would agree with that. Everything we've looked at so far says that the mRNA vaccine for COVID-19 is both safe and effective and recommended for pregnant women. It's also recommended for women who are considering pregnancy or those that are going to become pregnant as well as women who are breastfeeding. So we agree with that statement and we would support our patients and strongly encourage them to get the vaccine. We know that the COVID-19 infection has some serious risks for women who are childbearing, um, pregnant or gonna become pregnant. And so we would really encourage the vaccine. That's our best line of defense after masks and hand washing um, that we have to protect women right now. Great. There's, a, there's another topic that has to do with the effect of the vaccine on our bodies, and, and it's something that people have questions about a lot. And the nature of the questions has to do specifically with this idea that it's a messenger RNA vaccine. And messenger RNA sounds real, you know, fancy, and, and that's kind of high-level biology. So it sounds a little bit scary because RNA sounds like DNA and DNA is our genetics, right? And so the question is, does taking this messenger RNA vaccine change our DNA? Because that would change our genetics and it might cause mutations and birth defects and things like that. So I wanted to talk just a little bit about what messenger RNA is and how an mRNA vaccine works, because those are the only two vaccines that we have right now. There are other vaccines coming, but at this point, those are both of the vaccines that we have right now, Pfizer and Moderna. So the issue is that our DNA is, is the material that determines who we are, and it's located in the nucleus of the cell but the mRNA vaccine does not interact with our DNA. It doesn't interact with our chromosomes. The vaccine is, is in little lipid particles uh, called nanoparticles, and we, we take the vaccine with an intramuscular injection, and then those little nanoparticles get into our cells in the cytoplasm, and the mRNA opens up. The mRNA actually makes the vaccine it's an amazing concept that our own bodies make the vaccine inside our cells. So we're actually not giving the vaccine, we're giving the instructions for our own cells to make the vaccine. 
So our cells, a lot of muscle cells, liver and, and spleen and so on, make the vaccine and then our immune system sees it and then we develop a really nice immune uh, uh, response to it. So the mRNA vaccine never comes in contact with our DNA, never touches our chromosomes, cannot change our chromosomes. In fact, the mRNA vaccine only lasts for a few seconds or a few minutes in the cell before it goes away and it's not, uh, it, it doesn't stay around in the cell, it doesn't persist. So there's no effect of the vaccine after a few minutes after that uh, mRNA is, has done its job. So it's really a new concept in vaccines and it's very safe. I've got another question for you, uh, Dr. Walker. People say that the vaccine could harm the fetus in the pregnancy, or they say, we don't know if the fetus could be harmed or not. How would you respond to that? What do you think about that question? Sure, I think that has been the biggest question on every woman's mind. And the biggest fear is surrounding this concept that we don't know anything. I think a lot of people are under the false assumption that we don't have much evidence so far, but in fact, that's really not true. Um, not only do we think this is safe and doesn't cause harm, because again, like you just described, at the cellular level, mRNA is not changing the chromosomes. It's not harming uh, the person's cells or, or the basic DNA of, of someone. And there have been pregnant women in every part of the trial so far. Although we don't have a huge trial of pregnancy exclusive women, there have been women in every phase of the vaccine trials that have been pregnant, have become pregnant, or have been breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And we're not aware of any harm to any of these groups. So again, we do have data on pregnant women, those wanting to become pregnant and those breastfeeding that have received the vaccine. And we're also continuing to follow those women. So there is a lot more data that will be coming, um, but we know that so far there has been no harm for any of those groups of women. So we think it is very safe and absolutely no evidence of harm to the fetus or preventing anything um, from happening in the future. Mm -hmm. I know that's another, another question. I'm sure you're gonna wanna talk about fertility, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the last topic that we've heard about. There's a rumor that yeah. the vaccine might affect fertility. And there's, there's actually a, a little reason why that rumor got started. Um, uh, and and I'll, I'll actually throw in both male and female fertility because they're both, the question is valid for both of them. So what do you think we know about that question? And we can talk about that a little bit. Sure. Um, again, I'll say that there's no evidence of fertility problems for men or women. We, we know that to be true. Um, it started, this theory came up because there is a little part of the mRNA um, vaccine that has a protein spike that is similar to a protein that you would see from the placenta, of, uh, from a human placenta. So those two proteins um, are sort of similar. And so from that, someone kind of jumped to the next level and said, well, if those proteins look similar, you know, maybe there's some kind of reaction or maybe those can cross react and maybe that causes damage. Um, and therefore, if a placenta can be damaged by this, then that would lead to infertility. Um, but in fact, those are two very separate things. Um, the vaccine does not damage pl the placenta. We know that to be true. We have evidence that that is not the case. Um, and in fact, there's no no evidence of any problems with fertility for men or women, but it came from this kind of big leap of speculation about proteins. Uh, mm -hmm. But we know that not to be true. There's no, no risk to fertility for men or women with the COVID-19 vaccine. One other thing people have asked me, Dr. Van Inc, is did I get my COVID vaccine? And what do I think about it? How have I felt? Um, and I have shared with my patients, I absolutely did get my COVID-19 vaccine. I've had both doses now. Um, I'm proud to have received it. Happy for Bronson and Pfizer and, and science. Um, I feel fine. I was a little sore. People have always asked about that too. How did you feel? Um, I was a little sore and I am so thankful for that. So I absolutely had both of my vaccines. That's right. That's right. We, we <laughs> like to model that good behavior. So there it is. 